All right, now that we've got a lot of the movement stuff out of the way, let's talk about something that is a little bit more fun and relevant. So this is going to be the actual firearm collision, and I'm going to kind of step you through how to set this up and control it and control what things may actually move your firearm out of the way, what don't, as well as show you how to alter where the firearm goes and control the short stocking. So basically, under here in our character, if we click on our character component, we have a second drop down here, and this is for firearm collision. So we want to enable firearm collision. Everything else for now, you should be able to leave as default. So as you can see here, I defaulted to the second game trace channel. So what we're going to do is, again, if this does not work for you right now, don't worry about it. As you can see here, when I walk into the wall, it pushes the gun back, starts to short stock. And here it pushes the gun out of the way, and we have basically some firearm collision. Now let's control what things can control or affect the collision. So we're going to go to settings, project settings, and under engine we'll see a section called collision. So here we have our trace channels. This is where we want to add and set those. So I'm going to give a new trace channel. By the default is block because I want everything by default to block the firearm to give it, you know, allow it to work with its collision. And then give it the name of firearm collision and accept. Let's head down here under firearm collision channel. We can now choose firearm collision as an option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so this little stub, whatchamacallit here, this uh, bump static mesh, we come down here to the collision, the collision preset, we're going to select custom, and here you can see we have a new section for firearm collision. So right now if I walk over to it and I swipe it with my muzzle, you can see firearm is hitting it, so it's pushing it out of the way. If I set it to ignore for firearm collision, what happens now, so this staircase, for example, all this stuff blocks it, but this does not, so it completely ignores the firearm collision and doesn't block it. So you would do this for, like, let's say you had a mesh that was meant to simulate, like, a waterfall or a piece of hanging cloth or something like that. That's where you would control it right there, so you have that ability. So well, that wraps up the majority of that. Now let's talk about the actual posing of it. So I'm actually going to reset that back to block it. And I'll just uh, do default. Okay, so let's look at the firearm. This is where that gets controlled. So if we come down here, I can minimize all this stuff. We have this thing called poses. So here we have the short stock pose distance. So this is for short stock. If you're not familiar with what that is, uh, let's say you have your firearm, you have the stock in your shoulder. Now let's say you wanted to compress this to where your overall length does not extend out very far. What you could do is you could push the stock underneath your armpit and suck the firearm in closer to you. So that's what this controls. So it's at a distance of 18 right now. So let me actually play in this view. This will probably make it a lot easier to see. So I start walking and you can see it pushes it in like that. So it pushes the firearm inward before it actually goes into its pose for the high or low port. So if I bump this up to something big like 30, what you can see here is now it goes in really far. It just keeps sucking it back until it finally collapses to its pose. So what we're gonna do here is revert that back to 18 and we're gonna control the pose for it. So here we have high and low port. So the difference between those are this is high when the firearm goes up like that, that is your high port pose. Then if I look down, it goes into the low port pose. So basically pushing the gun out of the way. So this is where you tweak both of those. So this high port here, let's say we wanted to get a mixture. So this low port pose, I'm going to just set this rotation on the X to be zero. And you can hopefully see the difference to get a rough idea. So there basically, still kind of keeping it straight but we're just rotating on the side. So you basically would modify these two to kind of get a general part of where you want it to be. Let me go back to normal. There we go. So you want to set these to where it looks good for you. And again, we have a separate section for first person and third person. So if you're the controlling character or the controlling pawn, you will be using these first person poses. However, other people will be seeing you use the third person. And same thing goes for the sprint pose, which I will cover in the next video.
So you can ignore all these, but that's basically what the high port and low port poses control are your weapon collision. And you can also manually go to these poses as well by, let me go ahead and just grab the character component. And you can see we have set high port pose and set low port pose. And then we have the same thing, stop light port and stop low port. So just like with leaning, it is used in the exact same manner. So that wraps us up. And in the next video, we're going to cover the sprinting pose. So I will see you then.